Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. Usually I blog about tech things and I talk about things like developing with Linux on Windows on this channel, educational videos. Um, I guess this is kind of an educational video. I want to talk about the state of virtual reality, about VR, and how I, as a bit of a VR enthusiast, but by no means an expert, have found my way to a smaller, simpler, more inclusive uh, device and not the big expensive one that I spent a lot of money on. Um, and how I think that there's good things happening in VR that are making things easier for folks to get started, uh, but there's also things that are preventing uh, innovation. So originally I have my big machine here. It's a fancy computer with uh, uh, an NVIDIA 1080 and lots of RAM and it's a great gaming machine and I've got a you know 4K monitor. So I got a Vive this is the Vive headset with the fancy audio strap and this cord, this annoying cord. There used to be a cord that was three. Now the Pro has the one cord. You constantly find yourself getting tangled in this. I tried mounting it to the ceiling, dealing with this cord. It was kind of a, a hassle, but it's a big and attractive and it's the, the top of the line VR headset. So uh, why am I sad about it? I don't even use it that often. I was, you know, to give you an idea of how stupid I am about VR, I even 3D printed this rifle for onward so I could put my handsets in here. And that makes for a nice experience. That's all 3D printed and fun. I found that on Thingiverse. I don't really use that either. So what do I end up using? I end up using this little $300, $400 Oculus Quest. This thing is underpowered, but it's fun. It's portable. You can put it in a little box. I actually got a cute little case for it. Portable. Take it to a friend's house. You're going to get VR, VR hair no matter what you do. It is a wonderful, perfect little machine, and it has completely revitalized my enjoyment of, of VR. It's lighter, it's simpler. Now, it's underpowered, runs Android. It's not a high-end thing, but it, it turns on quickly, it plays games quickly, and it doesn't have to be tethered. Now, you'll see I've got it plugged in right here. I'm actually going to unplug it. You can use a thing called Oculus Link Beta, uh, which lets you use a USB cable, USB uh, 3 cable, as a kind of fake HDMI, and you can go and buy a nice Anchor USB-C to USB-A cord if you'd like. But what I've discovered is this thing called Virtual Desktop. So we've got Steam, of course, where all of our great VR games are, and Steam has the Steam VR application. So I'm going to just but this, there's no good way to do this, by the way. You look like a dork no matter what you're doing, so just bear with me. So here's the part that's interesting. I'm not connected with a wire right now. I'm wirelessly talking to my machine, and we're launching this. This is the Half-Life Alex, and uh, this is supposed to cost thousands of dollars. You're supposed to buy a fancy one of these and you get a special additional adapter on the back and it's a whole thing okay but with this suddenly i'm doing vr wirelessly with a 400 dollar headset but in order to do it i had to install the virtual desktop streamer and that virtual desktop streamer application then streams to an application over to the Oculus Quest. And that Oculus Quest application had to be sideloaded. So the virtual desktop needed to be sideloaded. So I had to put this Oculus Quest in a developer mode, sideload it, run a streamer application, which is grabbing all of this, sending it over here in less than 20 milliseconds, and setting me up for success. Where are you taking now in this game, the Quest is not doing the work. It's basically a dumb terminal, okay? And so 
So my PC is doing all the work. So you can use the Oculus Quest in a uh, as a local standalone device, and you'll get good quality. But with this virtual desktop application, it's amazing. Now, in this case, I can do it seated, or I can stand up and I can look around. Now, I have a pretty decent setup in my house with a Ubiquiti 5G network, but I don't feel any sense of lag as I move around in the game. It's very comfortable. Sometimes I'll just look close at stuff. Just because the textures are so amazing. So the question is, why did I have to sideload an application? Why isn't this built in? I can only assume that it's organizational willpower, because this is pretty amazing, and it should be built in by default. What I do want to say is that I've been absolutely impressed with the quality and the style and the ease of use of this just as an Android device. I had no idea that with minimal effort I could go and get it working wirelessly, which is more than this can do without its add-on pieces. Now you can, and it's totally supported, use Oculus Link and just plug this in with US, uh, USB. And this acts again as a dumb terminal. When I say dumb terminal, I mean it's mirroring what's happening while your PC is doing all the work. And you're getting, in my opinion, a very comparable, a very reasonable quality headset for a uh, pretty decent amount of money. Uh, one other thing worth pointing out is the controllers comparing the Vive and the Oculus are a lot smaller. My point is, not in any way to disrespect the HTC Vive Pro, is that this doesn't feel pro. It doesn't feel top of the line anymore. It doesn't feel any better. I know that it's got more pixels. I know it's got more frame rate, but I just keep coming back to this tiny little wireless device that uh, lets me both be uh, using its local games and then doing virtual desktop. So I would encourage you to check it out. The Oculus Quest is really impressive and I've had a lot of fun with it. I hope that they don't break it and make it so it can't do this uh, thing that I just showed you.